change the space-time curvature, and there's some mass sitting there, I affect the mass, and I change the mass. Now, you can get new mass. In a curved space-time, a photon has mass. The photon interactions with that mass now can add mass or subtract mass. You get my drift? You can have in this, if I take the exact template, the exact forms of all the dynamics and all the curvatures, I call that a template, I, and, that, and the dynamics, I call that an engine. Because if I change the space-time itself, which I can do electromagnetically with these higher symmetry electrodes, I can't do it with U1, because it assumes a flat space-time, don't have an engine. But if I use one of the others, I can have an engine. I can make it in space-time without a piece of mass even there. Then I can bring in a piece of mass, and it'll baby work on that dude until that mass changes to where how it would affect space-time fits that curvature, and that curvature working on it fits what it is. So that balance occurs between curved space-time and that. The engine works forever, and you don't have to provide any energy from it. It takes it from the whole universe, space-time itself. So you must understand the engine concept. Now that I'm talking about the super system, I have engines. Now the engines exist in the vacuum. I don't have a linear vacuum. I have structures in the vacuum which will work on those charges, move them around, change their charge, change a negative charge into a positive charge, all kinds of things. Now the lab observer looking from his flat space time at that is going to see the intersection in flat space time of that thing. He's not going to see that thing in curved space time. If I started with a standard set of something that I can model in a relatively flat space-time, and I make a peak in it somewhere where it violates that, now if I change this whole thing, I've still got my peak. I didn't change what I started from. So you will recognize in your chemicals, in your molecules that you form, you will recognize the peaks of certain things that, well, it's just sulfuric acid. No, it's not. It would be sulfuric acid if you unkinked the space-time and got rid of the engine. But as long as that engine is residing in that set of uh, atoms and all making up that molecule, you do not have to have just the model that exists in, in the normal stuff. For example, what would be unstable in equilibrium conditions? This is not equilibrium. Curved space-time is a broken equilibrium, a very fundamental one. And you do not have to have what you have in the equilibrium conditions. And it can be stable as long as that curved space-time is stable. The business of charging one in the time domain, you can have it charged for an awful long time. You can just hold that and stay there and sit on the shelf and all this. It doesn't have to decay. When it does decay, it decays very slowly, usually, unless you take special measures to convert it. But yes, what you're doing is really using engines. Now, it can be modeled... It can be accurately expressed, including the exact molecule you form, if we change the chemistry to add engines, to add curved space-times, to add active vacuum going on all at the time. If you get a balance between the stuff coming out of the vacuum and the stuff coming from space-time, that the only place there in equilibrium is where this crazy molecule exists, that molecule will exist. It'll lock in. You see what I mean? you got yourself a... A, a, a symmetrical condition, but look at the symmetry between curved space-time and the vacuum. It's not the symmetry that we normally look at, forget the space-time and forget the vacuum. Look at three space. We're not looking at three space. We're in four dimensions. Or if you want to, you can be in 11 or 12. Depends on what you want to use to model it. So, you can have a molecule which is absolutely unstable in the present situation. The present model would be totally unstable. But if you have violated that model and you have achieved a balance between these other two components of the super system, then you can lock it into to stability in what the guy in the lab will see would be an, a terribly unstable condition. It will not be unstable. Now, he's not wrong. He just hasn't realized that he's wrong in his model. He would be correct if you were using the situation described in his model, assumed in his model. The background conditions, the initial conditions and all that, automatically assumed in his model. If you were applying those, then you could not be doing this and he would be right. Since you are not using those conditions, you have deliberately changed them by adding an engine, making an engine. Once you have the balanced engine between the time domain 
the curvature of space-time, actually the time domain in a curved space-time, and the interaction from the vacuum. Once you have a balanced equilibrium there, that will hold that state even though it would be normally unstable. It will be just stable as a rock. Under its conditions, that is a special form of symmetry. Not in three space where the, the normal chemist is looking, but between the space-time, curved space-time itself, and the local vacuum. That's where the symmetry is coming in. Whatever happens to it from space-time is balanced by what the opposite being happened. That stabilizes it, holds it right there. It's in an equilibrium condition. So yes, this is the way you have to explain what you're doing. Now, how do you get that done scientifically? You don't have a lot of choices of people that can handle that kind of electrodynamics, but you do have them. They are available. You've got to be sure you've got a couple of them. Terry Barrett, Myron Evans is out of it because Myron has a, a, a genetic problem. He's in Wales right now anyway, and he's being taken care of. But he's one of the most brilliant minds on this planet, so you could use him for consulting purposes. He also is a, a chemical physicist. He knows not only the physics and all this other stuff and all the higher symmetry electromagnetics, he's a founder of that, but he also knows chemistry. So he'd be an ideal consultant. Terry Barrett can handle all this higher symmetry electromagnetics and he can, he can hang in there with all of this. So you have to have people that know general relativity, know unified field theory where there's higher symmetry electromagnetics developed so that you can unify, you can't unify U1 electrodynamics with general relativity, they're diabolically opposed. One says the, flat, the space time is flat, the other one says, no, it ain't, it's curved. You can't put two things like that together. They don't fit. So, you know, in country boy language, they're stupid to try to fit them. They don't fit. Yeah. And nature's unified. Nature doesn't have it separated where they never get together and never operate at the same time. That's not true. Nature has them always operating. So what you're doing, as far as I'm concerned, is magnificent. But you're advancing chemistry out of a flat space-time, no vacuum interaction model into a non-abelian model where you have a curved space, a unified field theory model where you have both a curved space-time and you have an active vacuum interacting with that system itself, with that chemical system itself, with those molecules themselves. If you manipulate the charges, baby, and change the engine they're using, you can change what molecule they will form and be stable. And that's what you're doing. Can all be described with good theory. It will not fit the chemical model in most of those chemists' heads. It never will, because you're not doing that. You're outside their model working. It's okay. That's what advance in science is called. And in the scientific method, we're supposed to do precisely that if the experiments are replicable and, and done well. If they continue to be replicated and give results that refute the present model, all they're telling us is we've got to change our model. Nature works this way, not go model it this way. That's what they're telling us. That's scientific method. That's the advance of science. So that's what ought to be done.